So I was watching Learn Linux TV's episode and review on Fedora 38 today, and I thought it was necessarily pretty cool, and I wanted to check it out for myself. It looked like it could be a good mix as moving away from Ubuntu, because I'm kind of at that point that I guess most Linux people go through where you start to hear people bash Ubuntu because it doesn't necessarily feel like what you want from the Linux community. I don't know. I've gotten to that point. I loved Ubuntu and I use Ubuntu a lot uh, for many different things because it's just there and it just works. But I'm starting to feel like it's maybe not me as much, but I'm looking for a desktop that feels fairly good, it's productive, and it just works, similarly to what Ubuntu has given me forever. And so Fedora 38's built on GNOME. It has very much the same feel as Ubuntu, and it seems to just work, well, at least from Learn Linux TV's review. And so I wanted to check it out. Well, the best thing to do for checking it out is install it in a VM, play around with it, and see. So I got over to the Fedora website and go to downloads, or well, let's go here. So I get to this page, and this is what I'm presented with. And I check out the cloud images, and they don't seem to be what I wanted. And it didn't seem when we downloaded the file to look right. So I went to the workstation image, and we get here, and look at it, cool. And then we go download now, and this is the page that comes up. So we kind of have a media writer, which seems to be a utility. And then we have a bunch of live CDs. So I know that I've installed things like Kali in the past from live CDs, so I went ahead and started looking at things. Well, this gets a little bit worse as I get into my checksum, which is right here, and I click on it, and I get this, which isn't necessarily going to work for Proxmox. I mean, we could download the file and, and, and see what we could get, but it's not going to work well for Proxmox. So I, I did notice there was another link here at checksum file, and I clicked on it, and I got a file that I could look at. So looking more at this I this is the key we want and it's going to be right here so we do have the information we need so the first thing I wanted to do to show you is how to download your Fedora 38 image onto Proxmox and then how we're going to actually install it from a live CD because the process of installing Fedora 38 isn't going to be the same process as installing Ubuntu it's a different distribution for one, but two, it's fairly different because it's coming from a live CD as well. Then I wanted to show you what it took to get it working and updated. And I also kind of found a nice little surprise in the form of QEMU guest agent working. So I didn't have to figure out how to install that. But normally that would be the next step for getting a decent distribution working on Proxmox. So let's take a look at what was had to be done to get it installed and do a brief tour around it, sort of like we do on all of our other install videos. And I know this is the second install video in a row and I'm sorry about that we are working on other videos and it's just there's a lot going on in distro world and it's kind of fun to know how to install them and check them out I enjoy it so this is kind of what I'm doing all right so here at our Proxmox web interface we're going to go to local and we're going to go to ISO images and we're going to click on download from URL now here at Fedora 38 we're going to click right here at the download icon but we're not going to we're not going to left click we're going to right click and we're going to copy link address now that we've copied the link address we can go ahead and paste it in under the the URL and hit query URL. That's going to fill in the given file name that's coming from the URL as our file name so we don't have to call it something else. Now I showed you before that we're going to you know click here and then get the checksum file and it shows up here. If we read this it's SHA256 so back here at our downloader our hash algorithm we're going to select SHA256 then we're going to copy this number set after the equals and we're going to paste it in here for the checksum. Now we can press download and the download should automatically download the file and hash check it to make sure everything's working.
All right, so now we have our file downloaded. We can go ahead and close this screen, and our file's right there. So the next thing we need to do is create our VM. We're going to do that by clicking Create VM. We're going to call our um, VM today Fedora 38 because that's what we're installing. We do not want it to start at boot. And just so if you're not getting all these extra options that you see I have, you can click on this advanced tab down below and that's what makes them show up. I don't want it to start at boot, so we're not going to check that. And we're going to hit next. Now for CD DVD images, we're stored in local and we're going to select the Fedora workstation live x86 64 38 1.6 iso let the type can be linux our kernel version is can is 6x to 2.6 our system can stay all default but we want to check qemu guest agent disk can be 32 gigs will be enough to run this i'm going to check discard because i'm using an ssd i'm going to give this two cores i believe that is the minimum for this operating system you can correct me in the comments if i'm wrong and i believe two gigs is the minimum but i'm going to give it four gigs and again like i usually do i adjust my minimum memory down to two gigs which is the bare minimum. The Proxmox server that I have here at the golf house is going to have only six gigs of RAM in it. So if I have a couple of other things running on it, I could find myself running out of RAM. So I set that just to make sure. Now we're going to hit next. I have a VLAN set up that I put most of my containers and stuff on. And that allows me to have rules to communicate with them. By default, VMBR0 is the bridge that you would use for your Ethernet traffic. Again, I like I said, I have a VLAN set up and that's tied to a bridge in my network configuration. So I'm going to select VMBR1. Alternatively, I could set up a VLAN tag here coming out and it would do the same thing. I'm going to just take a glance over and I'm going to hit it. Now my VM set. So I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to hit start and I'm going to open the console. Now by default it says test media and stop Fedora Live. It's probably a good idea to test media but I hit the up arrow and I just start Fedora Workstation Live 38. Now remember, we're working from a live CD, so it can be somewhat slow to get this all running. And you can notice the first thing that we have on the live CD is install Fedora. So we're going to click on install Fedora, and that's going to start our installation process. Now again, this is going to be a little bit different than we're used to. We're going to select English and U.S. English because I'm in the United States. And now we come to this screen. What are we do here? Well, we have to click here on the system and the installation right here in this screen. Comes. Now again, I don't know. I, I didn't find it intuitive like the new installer for Ubuntu, but it, once I clicked around and looked around a little bit, I figured it out. So I want to, just like I did before, install this Fedora 38 to the entire disk. And I can see my disk. My disk is right here. Now all I have to do is click Click on it and then click on it again to select. Now I have that disk select and I just press done. Now when we come back here, notice our yellow hazard sign is going away and begin installation has now lit up. So we can hit begin installation and this will take between 5 and 20 minutes from my experience uh, depending on system performance. All right, so it looks like the installation is finished. So we're going to click Finish Installation. And now we're back at the Fedora desktop. Now, this is kind of where it got a little confusing for me. Not super confusing, but I was just like, what's supposed to happen? I clicked on Activities, and our fancy nine dot show applications, just like we have on Ubuntu, and I open Terminal Mode. Now, the first thing I noticed here was Live User. And I actually tried to add a user, and I succeeded successfully added a user. But then I asked you over and I was presented with another screen to create a user. A little bit confusing. So let me show you. Let's go ahead and reboot. 
I also want to show you something. We're going to drag our Fedora screen down a little bit here so you can see it. Notice our QEMU guest agent is all set up by default. No added installs or anything else that we need to do to get it working. It's just installed. It's really nice for virtualization. I'm glad they added that in. So now, as you can see that we've booted up, we're actually welcomed for, to Fedora 38 and asked to start our setup. So we're going to click Start Setup. And of course, course, I turn off my location services, especially on Proxmox, there's no GPS. I really don't need it on. Automatic problem reporting, I also like to turn it off. This is entirely up to you whether you leave it on or turn it off. I feel that I'm usually doing things outside of the standard use case, and if there's problems, it's probably due to something I caused, and I should just not bother them with it. If I'm trying to figure things out, if there's problems I'm trying to solve, I'm already probably communicating with them somehow or some way. So that's me. It's up to you. Turn them on, turn them off, whatever you choose. Now I'm going to hit next. I don't want to install any third-party repositories, so I'm going to hit next. And I don't need to, co to connect any account. If I did, it would be Nextcloud. But we don't really use Nextcloud all that much. I basically work from my NAS. Now this is something that I may be changing in the near future with some email and stuff. And if I change it, we'll explore how that inter integrates with some of these operating systems at the time. All right, so I'm hitting skip, and it asks for my full name. Of course, I give it VE, and I hit next. Then I enter my password. This is a demo system, so I use a super simple password just to give it a password, and I hit. If you're doing this, you probably should make sure you have a secure password, at least eight characters, a couple numbers, a capital, and some special character, at least one. Anyways, now we have a user set up, and we're ready to hit start using Fedora. And we're not going to take a tour. Maybe you'll want to. We're going to press no thanks. We click here. There's our desktop. If we click activities, we can actually scroll over to a dis different desktop. We're also got a shortcut bar with some information here, a software center, and our app. Our pre-installed apps are much, much less than what would come standardly with Ubuntu. But I think it's just the right amount for a system that you want it productive with. You can put your own stuff on it. You're not limited to their things and you can have just what you need. All right, but I'm gonna open terminal because the first thing I always do is update a system. And I'm gonna type sudo, and I'm going to type sudo dnf update and hit enter. We're asked for our password, enter whatever you set up, and our update and our upgrade process starts. No separate commands, no fiddling, no fussing. There are going to be a couple of yes or no questions, and you kind of want to pay attention because it sits here for a good period of time just blinking at you, doing something that looks like it's thinking. Now we can see from our system monitor that it's using a fair amount of resources, and it's definitely doing something. But if you were to like hit enter being impatient or something, it's going to import your install, and you don't want to do that. Okay, so it looks like Fedora 38 is fully updated and ready to be used. Now, I'm going to leave you off here with just showing you the last thing and telling you a little bit more. So they do have a great software center where we can look at different, different apps that we can download without using the command line or anything else. And I suggest you explore that. Also, check out Learn Linux TV's review. He goes into much more detail about about this particular operating system and has a lot more experience using it than I do. I'll be learning about this over the next few weeks and maybe providing you with a few updates if I feel they're valid for our channel. The, la the only last thing I got to say, it seems like DNF is replacing APT. I'm not entirely sure if that's totally truthful. And if I'm wrong, drop a comment below to help everybody else out and me as I learn about Fedora. As always, have a good night.